neural networks introduction in simple terms neural networks are computer programs or systems inspired by the way our brain works they learn and make decisions from data much like how humans learn from experience a neural network is made up of neurons layers weighted connections activation functions and so on let's simplify that neurons are the basic building blocks of a neural network you can think of them as mathematical functions that processes input data and produces an output they are connected to other neurons through connections each connection has an associated weight that determines the strength of the connection during training these weights are adjusted to optimize the network's performance a layer consists of a set of neurons and performs specific operations on the input data they are one of the fundamental building blocks of neural networks there are input and output layers at the edges and the layers in between are called hidden layers each layer plays a specific role in transforming and extracting features from the data a model refers to the overall architecture or structure of the network it defines how the layers and neurons are organized and connected this is a sequential model a linear stack of layers they are used in feed forward neural networks where data passes through the layers in one direction they are relatively easy to create and this is a functional api model complex model architectures can be created like this with multiple inputs and outputs it is useful for non linear connections between layers such as branching and merging layers can be of various types like input dense convolutional recurrent pooling flatten batch normalization and so on the choice of layer type used in a neural network and its configuration depends on the specific problem being addressed input layer is the first layer in a neural network which receives the raw input data it simply passes the input to the subsequent layers and doesn't perform any computations the number of neurons in this layer is determined by the dimensionality of the input data in a layer of type dense every neuron is connected to neurons in the previous and next layers they are commonly used in feed forward neural networks convolutional layers are mainly used in convolutional neural networks or cnns for processing grid like data such as images they apply filters to local regions of the input thus allowing the network to learn spatial hierarchies of features in recurrent layer output from a previous time step is fed as input in the current time step effectively enabling the network to remember and consider past information in the context of the current input this allows for capturing sequential dependencies in the data for example in time series or natural language processing a time step in recurrent neural network represents discrete processing of one element from a sequence for example a word from a sentence flatten layer is used to reshape data from a multidimensional format into a one dimensional format which can then be fed to a fully connected layer pooling layer could be used to reduce number of parameters and computations there are different types of pooling operations the most common ones being max pooling and average pooling let's understand what goes on inside a neuron assume x1 x2 and x3 are inputs to the neuron which are simply numerical values and w1 w2 and w3 are weights for each of the corresponding input connections every input is multiplied with its corresponding weight and all the resulting weighted inputs are summed up and a bias is added to it the result is passed on to an activation function which spits out the output for that neuron next obvious question is how are weights bias and activation function chosen both weights and bias are parameters that will be tuned during training so that neural network gives us accurate results the primary role of the activation function is to transform the value given to it in a suitable manner for the next layer or the final output it could be as simple 
as converting negative values to 0 and positive values to 1. There are many kinds of activation functions like ReLU which replaces negative values with 0, Sigmoid squashes input values to the range of 0 to 1, Softmax normalizes input values into a probability distribution over multiple classes, binary step outputs 0 for values below a certain threshold and 1 for values above it. The choice of activation function in the hidden layer depends on the network type. So for a convolutional neural network, you may choose ReLU activation function and for a recurrent neural network, sigmoid activation. And in the case of output layer, you would choose an activation function based on problem type. So for binary classification, sigmoid and for multi-class softmax. Depending on the architecture, neural networks could be one of the following types feed forward, convolutional, recurrent, autoencoder and so on, each designed to solve a certain problem type. The feed forward neural network is the simplest type and made up of input, hidden and output layers with information flowing in one direction. It's commonly used for tasks such as classification and regression. They are versatile and can be trained for classification tasks like spam detection or regression tasks like predicting house prices based on features. Convolutional neural networks are designed for processing grid-like data such as images and videos. They are commonly used in object detection, image classification and image generation tasks. While CNNs primarily focus on images and videos, they can also be applied to other grid-like data structures like audio signals represented as spectrograms. Recurrent neural networks or RNNs are suitable for sequential data where the order of elements matters such as time series, text and speech. Here you can see the same recurrent layer in three time steps T1, T2 and T3. Output from first time step is passed as additional input in the next time step. In general, this can be represented as shown. Note the computation equation, how it is different from the one we have seen before. Autoencoders are used for unsupervised learning and feature extraction. They are made up of an encoder that maps input data to a lower dimensional latent space and a decoder that reconstructs the original data from the latent representation. So autoencoders are very useful because they don't require labeled data for training. They learn by trying to reconstruct the input data itself. Autoencoders are used in denoising, anomaly detection and dimensionality reduction. So that was our introduction to neural networks.